Exercise 9.9, Flexible Budget Performance Report. Refer to the data in Exercise 9.8. Auto Lavage's actual level of activity was 8,100 cars. The actual revenues and expenses for October are given below. And what I've done is I've just replicated what we had in Exercise 9.8. So we have our budget amount per unit and we have our variable cost. Here is the actual amount of 8,100 and I've left the rest blank. I've just, uh, rather than make one separate chart and enter it in later, I've gone ahead and put it all in right now. So this column are actual results. Required, prepare a flexible budget performance report for October using Exhibit 9.4 as your guide. All right, so let's do that. So we need a flexible budget for 8,100, and here's 8,100 units. And remember, we want to multiply each of these uh, uh, variable costs by the 8,100. So we want 8,100 to stay the same. We note that that is cell J7. So we multiply 590 by dollar sign J, dollar sign 7. And we drag down to fill in our totals and get rid of the extra cell we don't need. So. I've already had the sum function in there. It's summed to 12,555, so our contribution margin is 35,235. Now we just have to fill in our fixed costs that, uh, that, that were given to us, and we know that we had 1,400, followed by 4,700, 8,300, 2,100, and 1,800. And that sums down the column for us. It totals our fixed costs and calculates our operating income. Because remember, I just copied the spreadsheet over to a new one, so it copied a lot of the formulas for me. Now we have to do the flexible budget variance, which isn't too difficult. It is basically our actual results minus our budgeted results. And there we go. Once we have that, here's a little trick. You can drag it all the way down. Now you're going to lose some of your formatting, uh, but that's okay. We can, we can always put our formatting back in, and we'll do that just, just to be consistent. There we go there, and we'll do the same thing here. And finally, the same thing here. I know I'm taking up your valuable time, but we like to, uh, like to have the look of consistency, right? There's our bottom. And we'll take out this extra line here. So there we go. There's our uh, budget, flexible budget variance. Let's see what it means. Notice that our actual sales had a favorable budget variance of $1,510. At 8100 our flex budget says we should have sold $47,790, but we did $49,300. So very, very good. Our cleaning supplies. Um, that is unfavorable. Why is it unfavorable? Because it's positive, uh, which means we actually spent 6075 We budgeted for 5670 so we spent 405 too much. Our electricity was unfavorable as well. Our maintenance was favorable. It has a negative sign in front of it. We spent less on maintenance than we thought we would. Our wages and salaries, again, unfavorable here and our administrative expense was unfavorable. Our total variable expense, $486 higher uh, than, uh, than we wanted. And our contribution margin is favorable because it is higher. So when we look at our variable uh, costs, uh, um, we can see that the majority of the contribution, of the favorable contribution margin, came in from average sales being higher than $5.90. So great for the upselling great for convincing customers to move up to a higher level of car wash, but our costs were a little higher. Now that could be that by moving people from a lower end car wash to a higher end car wash, instead of just wash my car, please wash my car inside and out, well that might take more labor to do. And we can see that wages and salaries were unfavorable by 162. Also it'll take more cleaning supplies to wash the inside of the car and the outside of the car. Maybe I want my rims done. Maybe, maybe that was an upsell as well. Well, it takes cleaning supplies to wash the rims. So just because these costs are unfavorable doesn't mean that we can say that our costs are out of control. It could be that in achieving the higher average selling price, we also had higher average costs. So our mix 
our sales mix might be a little off. Remember that if we have a sales mix? We're not just doing one car wash. We might have three or four, the basic, the deluxe, and, 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 and the grand package. Who knows? But it, it tells us where we should start looking. Now let's look at our fixed costs here. Well, electricity was unfavorable. Our fixed costs were uh, 1450 We expected 1400 Now this could be just, uh, and we have all seen this, where, where energy prices just start rising and rising, and that could be a big problem for us, right? Uh, for electricity, uh, uh, sorry, for wages and salaries, the fixed component, perfectly fine. Depreciation, we shouldn't expect any variability in depreciation. Uh, rent, again, we shouldn't expect any variation in rent. That's a contractual amount that's fixed every month. And our administrative expense came in favorable by $55. So, our fix, total fixed expenses uh, came in favorable because they're uh, they're lower by five bucks by a small amount so that our operating income is still favorable and the majority of our operating income the favorability of 1029 came in in the variable expense side of things uh, sorry the variable part of the contribution format income statement and it was predominantly the higher average selling price there we go that's 9.9. .9. The second part of 9.9 .9 says prepare a comprehensive performance report for October using 9.6 as your guide. Assume that the static budget for October was based on an activity level of 8,000 cars. So here we are. We're just going to continue on from where we left off in the last problem. And we can see <clears throat> that we have our actual amount we have our flexible budget and we have our flexible budget variance. To put it in the format of 9.6, this column should be in between these two over here, between the actual and the flexible budget column. But really, that's just, uh, it's just a presentation thing. We've got the columns that we need. We're going to leave it. We're just going to shorten the distance between here and we're going to deal with our static budget in this column and it's for 8,000 units. And recall how we did this. We multiplied the selling price by an anchored cell. We want to anchor that cell at M7. So dollar sign M, dollar sign 7, enter. That allows us just to drag it down to here, and we can get rid of the extra variable amount. For the total variable expenses, we can just use the summation notation. There we go. And for the uh, uh, contribution margin, we can simply copy the formula from one of these cells and place it there. There we are. And for our fixed costs on our static budget, they should be the same as the fixed costs for the flexible budget. So we simply just have to make reference to this first column in the cell. And if we drag down, it'll make reference to the entire column. And we can hit the summation button to sum those total costs and we can steal the formula from this cell and place it into this cell. Look how quickly we can do uh, a static budget. So there is our static budget. That was easy enough to do. But where do we go now? Well, we need a static budget variance, also known as a sales volume variance. When we did the flexible budget variance, we took the difference between our actual amounts and the flexible budget. To do a static budget variance, we're taking the difference between the static budget and the flexible budget, not the actual. So our variance over here, we'll click in, this, uh, in, in the cell right beside uh, the sales for static budget, and it will be the flexible budget sales number subtract the static budget. And we see that going from 8,000 units to 8,100 units based on an average cost of $5.90 per car wash should have increased our sales by $590, but it actually increased our sales by $1,510. So we're seeing the difference, the difference that we can get just by moving from, an, from a budget of 8,000 to 8,100. How much better, how much, how much should the numbers be just on a sales volume variance. So that's what this is. So make sure that when you do the static budget variance here, you're doing it from the flexible budget to the static budget. Now at this point, we can simply just drag 
uh, uh, drag all the way down because all we're doing is subtracting. Take out the, uh, the excess uh, numbers that we don't need. And there we go. We'll just uh, do some quick formatting. Bear with me. You may want to do some of this yourself just so that we have a nice visual. There we go. We'll do the same thing here. Top border. And finally, our last one. There we go. So now we can uh, see what we have here. Notice that our sales were favorable, as they should have been. The sales, the static budget to the flexible budget, you have a favorable outcome, 590 higher. Notice how all your costs are unfavorable. Well, they should be because these are all variable costs, so they should all represent 100 units higher. So there you can itemize these as all unfavorable. Total variable costs are unfavorable, but our contribution margin is favorable. And there should be no variance or zero variance with our fixed costs for a favorable outcome of $435. So what we want to do now is we want to break down the difference between our static budget and our actual results into two components. How much of that increase is attributable just to the sales volume variance and how much is it, is it, of it is attributable to the budget variance from a flexible budget to an actual budget for the same volume. So. What we're going to do is say, let's say we had the static budget of 8000 We actually had operating income of 17964 We budgeted at 8000 for sixteen five, which means we should have been $1,464 higher. $1,464 higher. How do we account for that? Well, 435 of that increase, 435 of it, is due just to a sales volume variance. Now follow the logic here. This is a budget at 16,500. That's a budget for 8,000 units. This is a budget for 8,100 units. Forget about the actual number now. Just keep your eyes where, where my mouse is. An actual budget, for, uh, sorry, the static budget for 8,000 units, the static budget for 8,100 units, just by increasing by 100 units on budget, we should increase by $435. We should increase by 435 just on a volume increase alone. So that when we look at our actual results for 8,100, if we're up by $435, well, that would have happened just on its own. So we can't say to any one person, you did really well, you're above budget. No, you're not. You're right where you should be because that would have happened just on sales volume variance alone. However, going from the static budget to our actual results, we're actually up $1,464. Now remember, 435 of it was just on an increase in volume. So if you took 435 off the 1464, you would have 1,029. So in other words, the actual results are better than a budgeted result by 1,029 because 435 of the difference between a budget of 8,000 and an actual performance of 8,100 is due entirely just to sales volume increase. So if we went up another 100, then another 435 would be the result of just that increase as well. So the performance increase above budget is the 1,029. The 435, well, it's a budget for 8,000. We actually did 8,100. So we want to we want to reward the right people for the right things. So we reward the 1,029, not the 1,464. There you go. So before you go away, let's be clear about how we broke down the uh, the, the variances in that uh, in the last question. What we had was we had a static budget of 8,000 units. From that, we compared that with a flexible budget, but still static in a sense, flexible budget of 8,100 units. And we found that the difference between the two, the difference between the two budgets should have been 
435. So we compared the static with the flexible budget. Then for the last step, what we have is our actual results. And we compared that with our flexible budget. And we found that between these two, we were up 1,029. So moving from a budget of 8,000 to a budget of 8,100 got us up 435. Looking at the difference between what a budgeted amount of 8,100 units is and actual results of 8,100 units should have been up 1,029. And when we looked at the static budget to the actual budget, we found that the difference should have been 1,464. Notice how it decomposes into a sales volume variance, which is what this is, a sales volume variance, and the flexible budget variance, or a budget variance, but we want to be clear that it's not a static budget variance, but it's a budget variance from a flexible budget, and there's our budget variance. So we reward based on a budget variance, not the complete variance from static to actual, because static to flexible, the 8,800, the budget amount, the 435, should have just happened because of a sales volume variance. Here's where the reward lies. Here's the total difference. So I hope that uh, that sort of sheds a you know a bit of a, a new light onto what that last report is actually trying to do. That's it.